Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do, wise man he. Who we are and what we accomplish in life is based on a series of routines and habits that we follow. And we've all had experiences where we try to break a bad habit with very little success, finally saying, ah shoot, this is who I am, just let me be. And that right here brings us to the focus of today's episode, learning how to install new empowering habits. Hi, I'm Sheila and this is Lumia 24, light on. Do you know that habits are not just the physical activities that we do or don't do, like the can't start my day without the cup of tea one, or overeating, or not exercising, smoking, complaining. Habits also include how we routinely feel and think, feeling happy or unhappy, being angry all the time, feeling successful or unsuccessful, feeling low, feeling unmotivated. Everything that we do as a routine, almost on autopilot, is a habit. Now, of course, you want to keep your good habits. We will talk about those habits which we want to change, which we are struggling to change and often feel guilty about having. And in order to change a bad habit, we have to go right up to where the drama is happening in your brain. Remember when you were first learning to drive a car, it seems so complex, especially if you were using the manual one. Three pedals but only two feet. Release the clutch slowly and at the same time press the accelerator. Too fast, too slow, the car jerks forward, the car stalls. Change the gear, look down because you can't remember which gear the car is in. Jerk again, stall again. And of course the feelings, fear, confusion, embarrassment, a million signals to the brain. Thinking, what do I do? What next? What next? And then after a week of driving, suddenly it seems easier. And now, you probably don't even think about it when you get into your car and drive away. It has become automatic. And this is exactly how a habit is formed. Whether it's your physical habits or the emotional ones, you start them all by a lot of present moment thinking, reminding and working. Though it doesn't seem that way now. Charles Duhigg, the author of The Power of Habit, calls this process chunking, when the brain converts a sequence of actions into an automatic routine. You have to realize that all habits consist of a simple but powerful three-step loop. First, there is a cue for the habit, a trigger which tells your brain to go into automatic mode and choose a habit, a routine which is what you do when you're triggered and the reward which helps the brain remember whether this habit is worth it. As time goes by, the cue and reward is so intertwined that the habit becomes automatic. Let me give you an example. I have this habit of having a huge cup of tea at 11.30 am and no matter where I am, this urge for tea is so strong that I even drive to the nearest cafe and order my large cup of tea. The cue here is the mid-morning slump, especially if I'm writing and the reward is a recharge to my brain cells. Now, I just cannot decide to stop drinking the tea. That is a temporary solution. So, we have to play by the rules. So, what are the rules? The cue and the reward loop. The cue and the reward both are valid. I realized that drinking something warm soothes me, relaxes me and gives me a chance to stretch my legs. So, all I have to do here is replace the tea with warm lemon water and check if it works. And it does. If you want to get rid of a bad habit, you have to find out how to implement a healthier routine to give you the same reward. Of course, it's not that simple. Forming new habits is just as hard. Just because you're telling your brain that there's a reward doesn't mean that that habit will stick. It only really sinks in when you train the brain to accept it. See, I always say that it's like training a dog. Command, reward, repeat. Command, reward, repeat. So if you're looking for a quick tool to get rid of your habits, here's what I have in my toolbox. Since this is how I train my Beagle Max, I will call this the Max Intervention Process or MIP. So here's how you do it. First, 
think of a habit you want to change and think of the habit you want to replace it with. Let's say you want to replace not exercising with exercising. Now you use the if then process. Say if I exercise then I will reward myself with a smoothie. You will notice that two things are important. Focus on the behavior you want and two incentivize the behavior you want. Didn't I tell you I trained Max this way? Positive reinforcement. So it's very important that you have a list of rewards ready to offer your brain every time you exercise. And before you start out on that exercise, visualize the joy that that reward will bring. I allow myself to visualize the glow that comes onto my face after my run. My heartburn free stomach that allows me to eat whatever I want. And these rewards get me out of the door every time. Lasting change happens when the brain begins to crave the reward and that's when it becomes automatic. It will take time. It will take effort, but you know that the benefits will be worth it. And like I always tell you, your environment is stronger than your willpower. Surround yourself with people who are on the same mission as yourself. If you want to run more often, join the runners group. If you want to meditate longer, find the meditators group in your area. I love the fact that you guys love these videos. It motivates me to find all the topics that I can think will make a difference in your personal growth. So write in to me, leave your comments and show your love by sharing this video. Spread the light folks, let's create a better world.